Am I overexposed? Hi, this is uh, Tiger Lipton here. Some of my videos are overexposed, so uh, hopefully this is not one of them. Uh, I'm here with an unboxing of the Electro Voice oh, RE20. So right now you're listening to the camera audio, which is a popular smartphone, uh, a brand name which I do not wish to endorse. I think that might be my kind of catchphrase thing, me giving out about brand names, but uh, this is a lovely microphone. Terrible customer support, but uh, one of the best microphones ever. And when I say terrible customer support, that's just in my opinion. I wrote to them asking to my last one fixed and they didn't write back and... Yeah, whatever. Um, it wasn't so terrible that it turned me off buying another one because it's my favourite microphone of all time. It's, uh, again, the Electro Voice RE20, as you probably know, because it probably says it up there somewhere. This is the unboxing. I'm not even showing the unboxing. Okay, this is the... Uh, I have, have to stop showing my details there. But, uh, oh, yeah, this is the unboxing here. Taking it all out of the box. Let's see what we have. Lots of, lots of stuff here. I'm a bit delirious because I haven't got my breakfast yet. It's hiding behind me. Uh, we got an old Toman thing. This is only relevant to Toman people, I guess. They gave me two of them. That's cool. Uh, all right, here we are. Here is the Electro Voice RE20. Um, just a brown box. So I'll be plugging this in. In a moment. Uh, you're probably like me, you hate all this fucking chit chat between uh, between unboxing. Fast forward to the to the sound test. Uh, Alright, here we go. Open it up. I think I'll raise it out. Oh. So the difference between this unboxing and a lot of other unboxing is uh, I've already had one and it crapped out on me. And I know uh, I know a good bit about it. Oh some of the facts and figures might be quite accurate, but uh They'll be close. Here we are. Oh, <laughs> man. This is so nice. I actually I had an, one of the earlier versions of this. And the box is completely different. So we're going to gonna have a look at that. Okay, we got some... I don't know who... Both are. I think maybe they're the distributor of Electro Voice to everyone else. Because I heard some people talk about this. Um... Limited warranty, all that crack. Ah, uh, here's the, yeah, Electro Voice. You can tell I'm excited. Um, uh, specifications, impedance, all that crack. Favorite broadcast mic, yeah, drums, cool. Oh, here we go. Can we get this in the shot? It's pretty cool. Look at the old pickup pattern. Um, so the roll off appears to happen around four hundred hertz. Downwards, so that's is a roll off switch on the mic, by the way. Cardioid pattern, that's the shape of a heart. Uh, can we get that in? We can. Okay. I'll enjoy that later. Another bit of paper here. Let's see what we got. Probably the warranty or something. Load of waffle. Skip that. Here's a little thing we'll probably need a uh, clip adapter. Ooh. So there's the box, nothing special. Here's uh, here's the other box. Now this, uh, the last box I had for this was made of really hard plastic. And um, it wasn't much better to be honest. I, I think this, mm, the other one was, was very hard plastic. Um, and inside it was foam. And uh, it was kind of thing if you, if you threw it out of an airplane or something, it would probably survive. Um, but there was a clip that was kind of loose, and the more and more you open the clip, the more wear it would have on the plastic. It was a plastic hinge, which isn't ideal. Um, but you know what? I personally don't use these. I I put all my um my microphones in the, in those Shure uh, SM58 carry bags because I just find them so convenient. Just stack them all up in there, put a label on what each microphone is. So here we go. What what's gonna be inside? Um. Man, I really love this microphone. 
the way it sounds is ridiculous. It just sounds like what you... Oh, yes. Very nice. The microphone clip here, I notice, is different uh, to the the older microphone clip. A little bit of dust there. But probably just from all this stuff here. Okay. Oh, it's so heavy. Wow. Um, this feels not great. Uh, I don't know, it, it's, for what it is, it, it's good, like, it protects it, it just, uh, mm, I don't know, the sewing up here is nice, just this stuff just looks like it was cut out with a Stanley or something, it's, it's hanging out, it's, uh, mm, yeah, I don't know, I never use it, so, it doesn't make any difference to me, I'm just nitpicking here, how is this video five minutes long already, or six minutes, uh, I guess it's going to be an in-depth review and like bits of sewing hanging out here. Uh, I don't know. I nitpick a lot, so I'm not the. I wouldn't give that ten out of ten anyway. So here's oh uh, yes, the switch is different here to the earlier model as well. This is a much nicer switch. Yeah, that's actually gonna last. The last one, every time you moved it, it almost wore away, and all this paint had worn away. Um. Oh wow. The mic clip needs to be tightened. Uh, getting all the screwdriver out for that. Uh, I guess that's kind of nice in a way. It, you tighten it to your own taste, which is okay. Um, here's the microphone. Isn't it lovely? It's a, a lovely, lovely microphone. So I have a feeling this microphone's gonna fall off a lot. Now I'm gonna plug it in now. So from now on, you're gonna hear the uh, the microphone, the audio of the. So this microphone is now being currently plugged into a, a Neve 1073 DPD. So the thing about this microphone as well, it's very heavy. So uh, it tends to just fall over a lot. But uh, okay. So here's the microphone you see in the unboxing. Now into the into the old chit chat. Can we get an even better shot of this mic? Isn't it a lovely mic? By the way, the, the slang name for this is Donkey Dick. So, um, if you want to be immature, like me. So here is the uh, the full range. Hello, hello, hello. This is a test of the RE20. Weird radio voice there. This is the, the filter on. Hello, hello, hello. This is the RE20. This is the filter that no one uses. Unless you have a noisy room, maybe you're a podcaster or something, or maybe you're using it for a hi-hat. I don't know why you use it for a hi-hat. The SM7B, this, uh, the competition to this mic sounds very nice on a hi-hat. I'm not a fan of this mic on a hi-hat, but anyway, roll that back to uh, flat. Okay, so a bit about the microphone. So it's got a, a variable D. It's all these, uh, these r things on the side here, which lets all the air out, and um, it also gives it uh, almost no proximity effect. So if you go up close to the microphone, if you come back from the microphone, the volume will change, uh, but the tone will stay the same, more or less. And also, hello, 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 this is a microphone test, hello. It's very forgiving if you move around the microphone. Uh, again, comparing this to the SM7B, which is a very similar mic to this, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, if you go up to the microphone, you'll get a massive big bass boost. Starts around 1K downward. Bass boost is around 10 dB, depending on how close you get. And with this microphone, there should be almost no proximity effect. There's actually a pop filter built in to the first little bit of the uh, the microphone which is very nice. Um, however, I will put another pop filter on it because after 15 years of not using the pop filter, the mesh inside will be begin to wear away and just become a bit of a mess. Now you can repair that yourself. This microphone, I use it personally for guitar, bass. Uh, I don't like it on floor tom so much. I like it on kick drum. If I want anything to sound vintage, I use it. I use it for backing vocals. I just recorded an album there. And I use the Sennheiser 41 for lead vocals. It's a sharper sounding microphone. And this one's a warmer one. So it stays just in the background, which is nice. If you're using it on a bass, maybe you move it in from the cone into the center of the cone for that kind of sharper sound. Because it's quite dull on, on the high range. You'll often find with this particular mic, you'll have to use a little bit of EQ on, on the high end just to, to help it cut through. This microphone is a very warm sound. It sounds quite vintage. 
Um, it doesn't have an artificial high end to its uh, possibly Big Brother. I wouldn't consider a Big Brother. I consider it like an evil step twin or something. The uh, Ori Tweet 320, I think it's called. It has a higher end. It just doesn't sound nice, in my opinion. So with this microphone, if you have, say, a bass drum and you put it up to the bass drum, it'll sound very, very similar to as it sounds in the room. However, if you get another microphone, it could sound a certain way, a certain kind of sound that you're looking for. But this is a, a good representation, already sounds good in the room. Often you'll have to move it to a position which will have a little bit more high end to make up for its lack of high end in a way. So for example, with on the guitar, I move it down towards the fretboard because it's more tinny down there and it gives a more even sound that way. It saves me having to EQ it. With a, a bass cap, like I said, I, I normally record bass cap at the side of the speaker, which is more bassy. For If I want it to, uh, if I'm using Ori 20, I'll move it to the center, so it'll get a bit more high end, so it'll just even out the the sound of this particular microphone, which is a little less high end. Again, but with the bass drum, I'll move it directly to where the the beater hits the bass drum for more high end as opposed to the side of the drum. It saves you changing the sound with the EQ, because... Yeah, I don't know. Keep it natural. Keep it organic if you can. The difference between this microphone and some other microphones is that with the the Sennheiser 41 has a, an enhanced high end, almost for artificial high end to it. That microphone actually has the loveliest low end I've ever heard. But but this one again just gives a very accurate representation of what the voice is like. With the SM7B, it's very restricting. Like you have to be like this the whole time. You have to keep your face on it. If you move away, it's gonna sound like. Hello, 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 hello. It's just going to sound different. Um, whereas this one's hello, 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 hello. Isn't there's not not much difference, especially with a bit of a compressor there to keep the the volume uh, more or less the same. Yeah, with the SN Seven B, you're going to get that proximity effect, and it just it just adds so much more mod to it. Like if you have uh, a singer who's quite a thin singer, I'd be quite a thin sounding singer now. I wouldn't have a big low end to my voice. If you have a thin singer, what you can do is you can do an artificial proximity effect. Just do a light boost between uh, 1k rising up down to, I don't know, 100. You can get a similar similar effect. This mic is just so forgiving if the singer moves around. Like, you can't keep a singer. Singers move around. Guitarists move around. Even if you put it right in front of their guitar, they'll just... Acoustic guitar I'm talking about, they'll, they'll move around a little bit. Sometimes musicians get in the moment, and they want to swing around and uh, feel it out a bit. I'd nearly say it's my favourite microphone. It has the cardio pickup pattern. Um, this is very good for podcasters, because if your computer's over here, you don't want to have the microphone right in front of your face. You want to just have it near you, typing away. It's great for that. Um, whereas with the SM7B, other microphones, you have to face it the whole time, get a bit of neck pain get all stiff this one you just you don't even have to think about it. it's just just in the room chilling out has that cardio pickup pattern which means it's just kind of picking up this kind of general area in front but with condensers it tends to pick up everything in the room maybe stuff in the next room um this is just it's just very good for for what i'm looking for and what a lot of other people are looking for a standard for radio broadcasting here, there we are. <laughs> it's falling over. Uh, this microphone loves falling over. You can get a shock mount if you want. Um, it has a kind of an internal shock mount. It's wrapped around with foam, so the the diaphragm itself won't really be getting damaged particularly or moving about too much. Let's give it a little shake. That's actually the mic stand shaking. Give it a little shake there. That's what it sounds like. So I guess in conclusion, some of the upgrades since the earlier versions of the Ori 20 are the box, which I guess is not really relevant. It's crap. This mic clip is, is it an improvement? Is it not an improvement? I gotta say it's the same. It just has different, different branding onto it. It seems to be made of slightly different, maybe just a different paint job. The switch feels nicer it, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break and wear away like it did with the older model um everything else feels the same as i said i had uh an older model of this which uh crapped out of me very sad if you want to get one replaced may as well just get a new one um off electro voice that costs around 300 to get it repaired but they don't even write back to you so what's going on with that electro voice i got in touch with a guy uh, in America, and he said he charged me 300 which is a bit less, but I still have to post it over there. I live in Ireland, by the way, so that would have cost a bit of money to send it over and back, and then possibly a bit of customs involved, giving out to them, saying, here, I didn't buy it, I'm just 
sending it over to get fixed and I'm getting it back. An unhealthy fear of customs, so um, I guess that can be put down to that. So this microphone is very forgiving. If, if your instrument already sounds great, it'll just sound the same. It'll sound still great. Um, if you want to change the sound, maybe reach for a different mic. If you do not want proximity effect, this is a great one. Because, again, like in radio, like uh, I've done some, some radio stuff and people move around. And they, you don't want that fucking bass stuff to drop off. People aren't fucking professionals in, in radio. Maybe the presenter might be, but the guests, they, they haven't been... People, guests move around. Like, you can't expect them to... Uh, to just sit still for you. So if you've anything else to say about this microphone, please comment below. I'd love to learn more about this microphone. And I'm sure other people would as well. This was the Electro Voice RU20 unboxing. I have been Ty Lipton from Tough Lip Productions. You can join me on the Tough Lip Productions website. You can join me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all that crack. Um, I'll see you soon. <laughs>